Oh. So, more of my ramblings, whatever. Um, throughout life, I think everyone is faced with, you know, some degree of conflicting desires, right? Just at low levels, at high levels, all over the place. Um, it's just a fact of things, you know. Hey, I'd like to lose weight and get in shape, but mmm, that pie sure looks good, you know. Uh, or, wow, I know I really should stay faithful, but, ooh. <laughs> but yeah, um, and you're constantly faced with these challenges, and whatever you want to look at them from any kind of... There's this, uh, you know, whatever lens you want to look through and however you evaluate your own what is good, what is not, you're almost invariably going to be faced with places where you have desires that come into conflict. And they may be very large ones, right? Uh, not on, on the level that I'm looking at, which are more immediate. Although often... They are immediate desires, but you could even look at it as um, your broad philosophies might be in conflict. Uh, so you may have, in general, a desire to do nice things for yourself and be happy, and another conflicting desire to save and prepare for the future and essentially you know, deny yourself certain pleasures on, on a very, very uh, high level. Um, which kind of expresses those lower level ones, right? The, the more immediate, where, where you're actually kind of looking at an immediate uh, desire versus one of your, your grander goals. And, and that's not a fair comparison. The fair comparison is at the philosophical level. The, uh, what are the two underlying um, conflicting philosophies of, of, of your own desires? And I run into something similar. I mean, obviously, I've had that my whole life, right? And to some extent, this isn't even very new. But the curveball here is sort of the desire for an impending death. Uh, obviously, it's not an overwhelming, you know, and driving factor in my life. But it's more present than it's ever been before, maybe? I don't know. More present than it's been in a while, in a long while. Uh, which has taken a look at, you know, geez, again, looking at the immediate versus, versus uh, the long term, but this is a really fair one that comes up, which is, should I go grocery shopping, you know? Uh, and mixed into that is the desire not to waste and not to leave a mess and stuff like that, right? So if I go grocery shopping and I'm able to die <laughs> in, in, in the period, I will have spent to excess money on food and that food will rot, and these things bother me on some level or another. And that's actually, you know, it's because of the immediacy of some of these things that I feel it kind of helps keep, keep me more aligned away from, I mean, you know, I could just stop eating, right? I've done that before. Supposedly I can. <laughs> doesn't, it doesn't seem to be working. I, I can't even slow down. Uh, I've been eating more and more. But there, there's another conflict, which is, well, if I manage to die within a reasonably short period of time, who the fuck cares, you know, how I'm treating my body? I might as well fucking eat candy when I want to eat, 
when I want something in my mouth, whatever. Um, I might as well not worry about anything beyond uh, that immediate gratification because screw it, man. There is no future that I want to plan for. <sighs> my damn battery charger. turned green, which means it's failing to charge, and then it turned red when I stood up. Uh, it, it is so temperamental. Um, <coughs> I don't know how... It, it, I mean, it's not like when I plug lights in that they flicker off when I step up or anything. It's not the wiring in the house or whatever. It's this particular battery charger. It's just a pain in the ass. Um... But, you know, there, there are so many different sort of conflicting factors, right, throughout, throughout my life. So, uh, to poise against my, my wish to just be done with suffering sooner, um, there's the hope to get through all my fucking games and play them all on video or at least something along those lines to continue producing them. I don't know, there it goes again. Oh. It definitely it is not charged. <sighs> but, uh, you know, within that kind of constraint, it's like, yeah, you know, what, what matter, this weird sort of goal that I, I've got, because I kind of get something out of making these videos, um, it's hard to define what, as compared to reducing you know, my misery overall, when there's just not, no comparable pleasure out of anything I do. There's also always, because I have no grounding in reality, these vain hopes, you know. <laughs> uh, and then they reflect on other things. So there's like choices that I could make in my life that would make me... Mm, less, uh, say, let's just say, less, even less desirable than I am, right? <laughs> and uh, those choices might lead to some probably relatively minor uh, increase in overall happiness. Yeah. I mean, one really clear one is, yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing fair there. There's nothing fair there. So, like, you know, uh, eating whatever the hell I want. Nah, yeah, but I, I'm, not, I'm not only worried about, um, about how I look. That's not the only reason by any means that I don't want this extra weight. I don't like the fact that, you know, especially since the COVID shit, that uh, I, I can't breathe properly going up the hill on some days. You know, I went for, uh, I went for a walk recently and it, it's so hard to tell. It's so hard to tell. Am I just so fucking out of shape that things that I, I do are now at a greater, you know, are a greater burden on my body and it can't handle it. And, and, and it's this real question because I know previously that it was an on-off type of thing. And I know that it still sort of is. But it may be a multiple influence thing, and the COVID uh, after effects may actually be the lesser of the two. It may be the extra five pounds or whatever that I'm carrying compared to 
when I had no problem, or the lack of exercise and loss of, of muscles and whatnot. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> it isn't a terrible uh, analogy. I, I mean, so if given the option to kind of plug in completely into a virtual reality <clears throat> uh, of my own choosing, I think I would take that in a sense that I'm not sure that I would take the push a button and instantly die. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, really, I really don't know in, in which way and, 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 and how to put that. Uh, yet, you know, when, uh, when I started having these, and, and I'm a hypochondriac, but I, I'm afraid of doctors too, so, I mean, or whatever. I mean, I just don't go to them. I, I, don't, I mean, if I'm afraid of doctors, I'm afraid of plumbers and electricians, okay? It's the same kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, but... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm there and I'm convinced because there's stuff coming out that appears to be me uh, in my stool. Well, not in my stool, instead of my stool. I'm like constipated and there's stuff coming out that appears to be human. <laughs> like, um, and, uh, you know, I, I was pretty convinced, yeah, that's one hell of a sign that... that uh, you know, I'm pro probably on my way to an early grave. But it's happened before. Um, this was a little worse in, in a number of ways, in terms of length of time, etc. Uh, it panicked me the first time it happened. I cut from coffee, you can see. I'm back again, but I'm being careful. I'm, I've cut back, and I'm not drinking every day, even, and, and whatnot. Uh, today was just, I want a French toast, and I'm like, well, I have to follow that with coffee. Uh, and and I, as long as I'm, I only made uh, half a pot, or a little more than half a pot. I have this. So my coffee pot holds ten cups, supposedly which is really five of these, pretty much. Uh, and that's what I would use to make. And usually my wife would take one cup, sometimes two, um, and I would drink the rest. But sometimes she would make coffee before I got around to it, uh, or, you know, whatever, like especially on a Saturday or, or, or something. She would make coffee, uh, and she'd just make, like, two cups of coffee, and then I had to make the choice of, well, which level do I want? Now, I can, I, I, I generally don't have the capability to handle everything on the spectrum, so when I make coffee, it is either at the 10 cup level or at the six cup level. Those are the two that I understand how many scoops to put in correctly. Um, I gave her a mathematical formula, which I don't think really works, but it made her happy. So, because if she doesn't have, well, if she didn't have uh, clear instructions to follow, uh, it would kind of panic her, even if the instructions aren't really the best to do. Uh, and I, I get that completely. I, I, in a sense, that's what I have. I have my clear instructions for how to handle the the. the six cups, and how to handle ten cups. <laughs> and they don't quite make sense, but, uh, but they work for me, and they seem to, to make, keep me happy in the same sort of way. Uh, and, and I would say that's probably in both cases some form of OCD, which everyone kind of has, I think. Everyone has those kind of things that they fall back on, uh, rules-based. That's how humanity can survive and operate. But boy, we've wandered off topic again. Um, the, 
the uh, the problem is where the conflict line lies with these competing goals, with these competing desires. Uh, if um, You know, in some ways, I could speed up what I think is the greater desire, uh, that for death. But rather, I think there's a higher goal, purpose to me, which is to do as little as possible. <laughs> to, to make, to, to just let wa life wash over me as much as possible. And, and I, I honestly think that's, that's the major, major um, driving goal in my existence, uh, is to not have to make decisions and not have to, um, to actually uh, be an actor of any kind. Um, not necessarily when I'm most happy, but it does seem to be where all my inclinations lie. So, for example, I can't take my own life. Why? Well, because that's a decision, right? But on the other hand, where I'm forced into uh, an active decision to preserve, for example, going to a doctor, getting a colonoscopy, whatever, um, I'm very, very easily capable of saying, yes, but... I embrace the death that might come earlier because I won't go, you know, <laughs> to the doctor. Uh, likewise, you know, any, anything that I can grasp for to prevent taking an active, well, see, that's not even fair, proactive role in existence because once I am used to a pattern of certain activity, once something becomes one of my, my, my patterns, um, breaking it may actually be the harder thing, the decision that has to be made. But anyway, what it means is, you know, I'm capable of driving forward on autopilot, playing my games or going to work or going shopping and doing all this stuff that really comprised almost the entirety of my life anyhow um, before this year, yet still maybe only have a real goal towards um, expiring a little sooner. And that's funny, uh, somehow this relates. Um, Someone I, I met at the bar brought up, I, I got in a conversation with them and uh, we came around to uh, trying to agree, I think, to try to get a role-playing group together. I'm not sure. But first of all, there's, you know, I don't really want to role-play with a bunch of people I haven't hung out with and gamed with before. Um, like, that's a commitment along the lines of sitting down to play a monster game with, some, with a, such a group. I certainly don't mind adding a couple new people to a group to try things out as long as there's a fair couple of people who I'm comfortable with hanging out around and therefore, you know, I know that I'm not just going to be sitting there saying, what have I fucking gotten myself into? Which I so often say when I have to deal with other people, under any circumstances, you know. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm trying to remember what the hell it was. I, I mean, geez. E even just on my walk to the bar last week, 
I ran into, somehow I, I got, ended up in the middle of a crowd of people going to a football game or something. And I was just so infuriated by their, their mere existence. Not, not because they were delaying me or whatever, just the inanity of the common human experience. Uh, it's like, it just really struck me and, and reminded me of the days when I was back in school and sitting on a school bus and just hearing all the conversations and parsing them all out and realizing, Jesus, what a horrible waste of stuff we are. Um, and, and, and it's funny because, you know, I mean, certainly I can make connections with certain people. I can feel, um, very much into a conversation at certain times. And honestly, something like alcohol suppresses uh, my intolerance in this sense. It's kind of like, I guess I become, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I know that I obviously become stupider and somehow maybe um, that sort of, you know, I am trying to say this without seeming conceited or whatever, but it, what it fucking feels like is if I drink enough and become stupid enough, I can come down to the level of humans. And, 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 and converse with them on their own level with the, hey, yeah, what about them bills? You know? <laughs> not at that level, not quite. But you know what I mean? I can talk about shit and I can uh, understand why they maybe are saying the things that they're saying in the sense of like, but maybe what it is is that uh, the alcohol just rewires me and I, it's not really... I mean, certainly it's stupider in a lot of ways. I'm certainly not capable of doing most of the stuff I'm capable of doing uh, when I'm drunk, but maybe it's just removing certain inhibitions, certain prejudices, whatever, uh, that, that are there as well. It's just, from my perspective, it feels like Overall, I've just become a whole hell of a lot stupider, and <laughs> now I can kind of relate to other people. You know? Not necessarily all that well, but I'm a hell of a lot better at it when I'm drunk. <laughs> you know? uh, but I, I, I suspect, I don't know, 